Welcome to Financially Speaking with SFM. My name is Cynthia DeFazio. I'm joined today by Frank Lavalio and David Allen. They are the co-founders of Security Financial Management. Frank, let me start with you. How are you today? Doing great. I think I might have mentioned on another show we did together, but I did have a my first grandbaby. Liz and I Aww. had our first grandbaby. And uh, with all the craziness of COVID, um, uh, there's a lot of sick people, and that's very sad. The silver lining is I got to spend time with all four of our kids, all kind of moved back in there from 25 to 35 years old, all in our home. And so we had all six of us. My wife's been the happiest she's ever been. And if Liz is happy, the rest of my life is really good. So sure. with a new grandbaby that stayed with us, uh, came down every morning down the stairs and had coffee with my daughter. And to watch that six months was something that we'll always remember. So Aww. things are special at home. It, she just left, so we're we're kind of sad in the morning. It's very very Aww. lonely now. I am, yes, and I'm probably much quieter. <laughs> very quiet. Aww. Good and bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Oh, David, how are you this morning? It's always a pleasure to see you as well. Doing great. Thank you. And uh, we had a big event also, and I think I've said on a previous show, is that my oldest boy, was just recently married Aww. and you know changes of plans had to happen because of the keep I hate to say this word COVID I'm so tired of it I so know, you know I, anyway I know. Um, it changed because of that and my son had a beautiful wedding and his uh, he has a wonderful wife and we're so excited to have him part of our life but um, it was very nice. Oh, wonderful. Well, you both are so blessed. I'm so thankful for my time to be on the show with you. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, Frank, do you want to talk about the history of the sure. company, if you yeah. will? I would love to go down and talk about that Thank, again. Thanks. But before that, how are you doing? You know, all this, oh, taking all doing our time. You're doing good? Fantastic. Good. Family is doing great. Good. Husband's doing great. All the puppies and birdies are fine. <laughs> the whole crew is awesome. doing great. So <laughs> thank you for asking. Yes. So it's a fun story, and we like to say a little bit on each show, and, and sometimes I elaborate, and Dave's like, man, that's, that's really saying? long. Would you shut up? <laughs> but sometimes it's too short, so I'm going to hit it right down the okay, middle today, good, okay? Good, good, good. So it's really kind of neat, and it's a story that uh, really we met when we were young men uh, at a basketball camp in Melbourne, 14. Florida, 14, 15 years old, okay. and I was a better basketball player, and right? That's true, right? <laughs> Bigger than yeah, me. yeah, I was stronger and still am, but no. So we became good buddies, and uh, turned out he lived in my neighborhood, so we just got back from a basketball camp, like, hey, that's a good guy, and he lives down the street. Aww. And so we stayed really good friends all through college, and we went to Florida universities, different schools in, in Florida, and, um, and we talk in the summers and say, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we're both studying economics and finance, we have sort of a passion for finance, wouldn't it be cool if we did something together and started a business together? And most of the time, that's, that's small talk, you know, and you go back and you have a cold beer and say, oh, that's probably never going to happen. Well, this is a story that it actually did happen, and we're going on 37 years later. We built a firm with uh, 20 other advisors, uh, Mike Allen. Two um, locations. Uh, two locations. Mike mm -hmm. Allen is Dave's brother, sort of my brother from another mother, and uh, we've kind of built this together, and uh, it's, it's kind of neat to go to work with your best friends. So we're really fortunate in that way to, to build something every together. Day. We laugh every Aww. day. We really do. You have to. I love that. And I can just tell because the two of you, when you're on the show together, you banter back and forth oh, yeah. so well. <laughs> well that's what happens so I every can day imagine anyway. every day in the office. And of course, they call it the Frank and Dave show. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why. I can see why. Let's talk about the importance, Frank, of working with a fiduciary, if you will. Sure. So we talked about it a little bit earlier. I think it was another show. Um, you know, the fiduciary really, if, if you boil it down, there's a lot of regulation. And I think it's good regulation. It's all about trying to protect the consumer, which we know is important. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure these are, you know, people's life savings are coming in. You know, we have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people that have trusted us with their life savings for the last 37 years. It's a big decision. And one of the things that the regulators uh, protect people, and it's a good idea, is to make sure that you're doing the right thing, mm -hmm. to make sure you're being objective, to make sure that people have fee transparency, which is something we'll talk about later in the show. But, you know, so many people, when they come in for a consultation, really have no idea what they're paying. You know, there's a lot of good advisors. Um, there's a lot of good people that we know that are advisors. But what we find is a lot of people come in and we'll look at everything one by one. We'll look at each asset, look at everything they own. And they're like, wow, I never had anyone really break it down for me what I'm paying in costs. So part of the fiduciary rule is full transparency and best making interest the right, best interest of the mm -hmm. client, Absolutely. doing what you would do 
the golden rule, I think yeah, we talked about yeah. that earlier, doing what you would do for your family, doing what you would do for yourself yeah. and your spouse, um, and that's really it. I don't want to get too deep because fiduciary rule is important, but you get in the weeds on it a little bit, you and can. people are like, oh, man, that's too much. So okay. we're happy to send you any details you want if you call. <laughs> all right, all right, perfect. Dave, let me ask you about the lump sum illusion. Let's talk a little bit about that this it's week. It's just kind of a little phrase we use a lot. Um, in our industry and in a sense when people are saving they're saving in their retirement plans most people you know they're taking money from themselves taking it pre-tax and putting it into an account and some people have a, a number in mind let's say they if I get to a million dollars I'm good but is it really good you need to you might need to back into that number and say here's what I want when I'm retired and I want six thousand dollars a month okay you have six thousand dollars a month after tax how much do you need is it a million dollars is it two million dollars is it three million dollars so uh, the illusion though many times people think if they've saved a million dollars in their 401k or two million dollars is it really spendable a million dollars mm. it might be over the long term but you have to pay tax on that money that's all 100 percent taxable money wow. unless you saved into a roth ira but or a roth 401k but that money million dollars, we're never going to cash it out at one time or else you would be, you know, paying Uncle Sam so much money. But if you pay it over, if you pulled out 50 grand one year, that's the gross number after tax, you know, whatever tax bracket it is, it's going to be net what you have to send to Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. What I would add to that, Dave, when we talk about this, because I think that's kind of a cool phrase, lump sum illusion, you get people have this illusion yeah. of if I have a million dollars, if I have two million, if I have 500,000, a lot of it is when we look at and dissect plans is what are you spending? You know, that right. should really be the first question sure. people ask is, sure. how much do I need uh, to, to spend each month? So if my needs are, I'm just going to throw a number out as no relevance to any plan that we've done because everybody's different. But sure. Let's say you need $5,000 a month just because it's a number that came to my head. And that's the first number you should look at. So if after tax you, want, you need $5,000 a month to walk off into the sunset and have the life of your dreams, that's a good number. Well, now let's look at what you work backwards from the expense side, then say, if I want to get this number, it's got to create $5,000 a month after tax for me to be able to walk off into the sunset and do the things that I want to do for the rest of my life. That's the more important number. And then we can say, okay, if that number is 782,000, just a number, by the way, then this is what you got to do. And if you're at 650,000, for example, you need another 130, $140,000. If that's the case, just given that broad example, then maybe you can't work. If that, the day you come in to see us is the day you want to retire the next day. Sometimes Dave and I have to have that tough conversation like someone would have with their patient if we were a doctor. It's like, your blood work, you know, your cholesterol is 360. You've got to do these things or it's not going to be, there's not going to be longevity right, for you. Right. So some of the conversations we have is you, have, you need 5000 a month, back to that example. What you have saved right now is a little short. You need or to work longer. You need to work another two years. We got to, again, give that tough conversation to tell yeah. people that you're not where you need to be. So I love that lump sum illusion. Work longer or, or lower your goals. Okay. So I, or okay. spend 4000 Perfect yeah. example, example. right? Yeah. This spend is the 4, perfect 000. time for us to open up the phone lines, gentlemen. Would you agree? Yes. Absolutely. To the viewers at home, the phone number to call is on your screen. That number is 877-740-6553. The gentlemen are offering you a complimentary, comprehensive financial plan by being one of today's callers on the show. Again, all you have to do is pick up the phone and call 877-740-6553. You've worked your entire lives to get to the retirement phase of life. Let the gentleman design a plan that's going to suit your needs. We'll be right back after this very short commercial break. How confident are you in your current financial plan? Do you know with certainty how the recent market volatility will affect your future hopes and dreams? How much are you paying in taxes? And how much are you losing to unnecessary high fees? You didn't work to save this money so that you could spend your time worried in retirement. Now is the time to take charge of your finances so you can feel confident about your future. Call in during the next 30 minutes of today's show only to set up an absolutely complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review that will result in your own customized written plan. This is a $999 value that we're giving away complimentary to the first 10 people who respond. We'll start with a full-blown analysis of what you already have. 
by running a report to untangle how much you are currently paying in fees, how you're allocated for risk, and what it's costing to work with your current advisor. Next, we'll identify your goals. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do you want to go, and who do you hope to go there with? Is your current financial plan set up to get you there without mishap? Let's design a roadmap to create a financial plan you can follow with confidence. Get the piece that so many people are missing from their retirement. Find out how having a written plan can make a difference to your retirement dreams. Call now to schedule your complimentary, no obligation, full-blown financial review today. And welcome back to Financially Speaking with SFM. My name is Cynthia DeFazio. I'm joined today by Frank Lavalio and David Allen. They are the co-founders of Security Financial Management. Gentlemen, a great show that we're having today, obviously talking about the importance of planning properly for retirement. Dave, I want to ask you a question. What do you mean by going broke safely? Well, we were just talking about that at the break. It's another one of those words that Frank and I have used over the years is that some people are so conservative that they want to leave their money sitting in a CD, a money market, a savings account. And you're earning, I mean, today, today's time, I mean, you're less than a half a percent sitting in the bank, um, which that's just the interest rate environment we're in right now. But if that's where you're choosing to put your long-term money, we call you're going broke safely because inflation is outrunning you. Mm. Um, if inflation's running at 2% and you're earning a half a percent and you're spending that money, guess what you're doing? You're going broke safely. Your, your money's very safe and it's not going to go down with the stock market, the ups and downs of the market, but you are going to go down. It's become, it loses its purchasing power due to the fact that inflation's outrunning the rate of return you're earning. So that's what the equity markets do um, or other, other types of investments that can earn better returns than what inflation is offering. And then you also got taxation on that money too. So you got taxes and inflation in the picture. So you've got to make sure your money within your risk tolerance, you know, that doesn't mean you need to step outside and go into what I, we joke around, call it the emergency growth fund because you, you're behind the eight ball. Don't ever let that be the issue why you're investing. Because if you take yourself out of your risk level and enter into places you're very uncomfortable. When you have market volatility that's happening, it almost always it freaks you out. Sure. You end up selling your positions or saying, I can't take this anymore, and you move out into cash. And guess what? You move out at the wrong time normally. Absolutely. Sure. I mean, yeah. think about um, in March of 2020 sure. when the Mar Dow went from 26 to 18. There were a few people, not many of our clients, but a few. You know, you always have the, maybe they got nervous or they called us, but we were very proactive during that process to make sure that some didn't. But there's always some. And I'm sure there were many that managed money on themselves that said, you know, I can't take it, move me out. And then guess what happened? It turned right around yeah. and ran right back up to 30,000. Yeah. So, so to speak, you were caught down at the bottom of the mountain. Sure. You're up at the top, fell to the bottom mountain, and guess what? Mm. It went to the top of the mountain, and you were left at the bottom. At the and bottom. to add to sure. the, the going broke safely that we talk about with clients, too, just a few examples that are very recent. You know, we talked about it earlier. You know, with, we've got about $2 trillion that we're trying to help people with all the, uh, the government aid, which is necessary. Last year, by the end of 2020, it was about another trillion. So if you think about three, three and a half trillion dollars that's going out, it's imminent that we're going to have some inflation, right? We got to, someone's got to pay that back. It's just not free money. Sure. And, and, and increase taxes. That's right. And when you look at, look at inflation, so you say, okay, some people that come in, we were talking about risk and we were talking about looking at your, uh, your, how much you're spending. Well, if someone comes in and says, you know what, Frank and Dave, I'm really very concerned about the market. I think I'm going to be just in money market funds for right now. And that's okay if that's what you want to do, but you got to understand what that means. Say that money market, for simplicity of this conversation, is a 1%, which is probably high, but let's just call it 1% for purposes of the, of the example. Okay. And let's say that right now inflation's been in check, but with trillions of dollars going out the door, I believe, and our firm believes, and I think economists believe, it's imminent we're going to have some kind of inflation, if not now, in the future, and also increase taxes to pay for this. So if you're looking at, if you're getting 1% of money markets and say you need 4 or 5% to reach your goals, then you can go broke safely because if inflation is, say, 2% and you're getting 1%, you're losing 1% 
in purchasing power, meaning a loaf of bread is going to be more expensive but next year, right. a car is going to be more expensive, mm -hmm. the, a house is going to be more expensive. Yeah. So it, it, Frank, you need uh, to do one that. thing also, yeah. people think that we're talking about putting you 100% into the stock market. Yeah, that's not, that's what, not we're what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a diversified portfolio, yes, to, to outrun inflation, maybe stocks should be a part of your portfolio or, ex or a diversified exchange traded fund portfolio or a separate account manager or mutual fund, whatever, uh, whatever suits you. Um, but it, shouldn't, it doesn't necessarily all have to be in the stock market. We're talking right. about a diversified portfolio. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Everybody's okay. different. Sure, absolutely. We're going to take a commercial break okay. in a couple minutes, Frank, but I want to ask you a question. Some of the pitfalls, can we just tap on a couple of those and maybe recap after we sure. come back from yeah. commercial? Yeah, and there's really uh, four pitfalls that we'll talk about, but I'll talk about one before the break. So one of them is, is too much risk. You know, mm -hmm. and I, we like to talk about too much risk because it can really kind of bite you. The other side of being 100% in a money market fund, which again is not wrong if that's what you want to do, is taking too much risk. So when we do these complementary analysis, we talked about it earlier, we'll look at a portfolio and say, okay, you own this, you own this, you own this, this is in your 401k, this is in a brokerage account. And again, we talked about technology is so great today. We can get we have a neat scoring system. There's so much available to advisors that want to you know, do the right job. When you purchase it, and it'll score it for you. So a one would be put your money under a mattress, right. you know, run for the hills. And a hundred is, oh my gosh, you bought every small micro cap available, meaning a very, very aggressive portfolio. And as we all know, most people fall sort of in the middle of that, right? And, but we'll be able to do a real assessment of risk and that's one of the things that we do when we, when someone comes in is to make sure that um, they're not taking too much risk. And that's one of the pitfalls. Yeah, portfolio okay. matches your risk personality. Okay. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Frank, this is the perfect time for us to go ahead and reopen the phone lines. Can you tell sure. the viewers at home what yeah, they can expect be, to receive? Be happy to. Thanks. So as we had mentioned, and we sort of said it along the way here, we're offering a complimentary consultation for those that call during the show. And when you come in, really the, the viewer that would make the most sense to do this, comp mm -hmm. uh, this complimentary consultation is really those investors that have four or $500,000 or more to invest. We find they get the most value out of this comprehensive consultation that we'll do or, or comprehensive plan during this consultation. Yeah, we'll financial plan. Yeah. Yes. And then okay. there's, again, it's multifaceted <laughs> what we offer, you know, income analysis, estate analysis, tax efficiency, risk analysis, also how much you're paying. And we, there's a couple other things we do as well, but I don't want to beat it up too much. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. To the viewers at home, once again, the phone lines are now open. That number to call is 877-740-6553. Again, you've worked your whole lives to get to the retirement phase. You deserve to have a plan that's going to suit your needs. Please call in during today's show, 877-740-6553. We'll be right back after this very short commercial break. As a good saver, you've been putting away money during your working years. Studies find that the biggest fear of retirees is running out of money. Market volatility isn't just the downward movement of stock prices, it's the size and frequency of change. The more dramatic the ups and downs, the higher the volatility. This can put savers who are newly retired or a few years away from being retired at greater risk. Today's generation of retirees is not receiving traditional pensions as our parents or grandparents did. Instead, we have retirement accounts such as 401ks or 403bs. These accounts typically expose your money to market risk. The last thing you want right before retirement is to lose a portion of the money you need for income. But how do you turn these accounts into a retirement income? Is it safe to keep all your retirement money sitting in the stock market? The last thing you want is to lose a portion of the money you need for income due to market loss. By working with a financial professional, you can learn how to turn a portion of your savings into an income stream for life and income for the life of your spouse if you're married. We all have moments in our lives when we wish we had taken action sooner. Don't let procrastination rain on your retirement parade. Act now before it's too late. Please call our office to set up your no-cost, no-obligation retirement income review today. And welcome back to Financially Speaking with SFM. My name is Cynthia DeFazio. I'm joined today by Frank Lavalio and David Allen. They're the co-founders of Security Financial Management. Gentlemen, a great show that we're having. And we talked about a couple of the potential pitfalls, if you will, with the wrong maybe plan for right. retirement. Dave, let me ask you, 
how detrimental is it to have the wrong advisor? Okay, that's kind of a, an interesting question. What does wrong mean? Mm -hmm. We're not saying that the advisor that you have is not a good person, doesn't understand certain things, mm -hmm. but you might have, let's put it in perspective, many people with today's money coming from one generation, you've inherited it, the baby boomers passing on and, and passing the money on to the next generation. Maybe they knew their mom and dad's advisor. Maybe they liked their mom and dad's advisor, but maybe their advisor was just a stock picker. Um, maybe was even entering and getting close to retirement himself or herself and wasn't working as hard, wasn't that easy to get in touch with, and you were really having a hard time saying that I need to have a new advisor because you didn't want to hurt his feelings. Sure, sure. And I'll tell you, that's a hard one. When somebody comes into us and we do the analysis and they say, you know what, I need to be with you guys, but can you help me what I need to say to that person mm. to let them down gently? You know, and to add to that, yeah. one of the things we see is, and we like the loyalty because, you know, many of our we clients do, yeah. have been with us three decades or longer. So we hope we, we're not the wrong yeah. advisor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we, we want to be the right advisor. Right. <laughs> we appreciate the loyalty, and we don't want to interrupt that loyalty. But what we do find is sometimes when, when, it, when, a, when a child inherits a, a parent's portfolio, it's very natural to say, hey, I'm going to work with that person. And, and oftentimes we'll see they may be a really good stock picker or, or they do some good things. Again, there's some good advisors out there mm -hmm. and we're not saying it may be good to stay with them. Mm -hmm. But what we do find is if you're, for you, maybe you want to be more tax efficient. Maybe your parents' advisor taxation wasn't important because they were just deferring everything. But say there was three or four kids and now that wealth's been distributed and your one-fourth is not enough for you to let it just keep growing. You need to take income from it. And there, maybe it makes more sense to get a, someone that does a little more planning, a little more technical analysis. Okay. Yeah. And so it's just, it's, it's all different. And it really depends on each situation to study it and do what's right for you. And does your personality match up? That's I'll right. tell you that sometimes oh. they'll say, I inherited my dad's advisor and I don't like him. Yeah. You know, or sometimes they say, you know what, he's a great guy. But in that case, you, you, you have to go out and find somebody that you, because many of our clients are good friends of ours. Mm -hmm. we, we have to like each other. We have, but it goes both ways. We have to trust each other. It's a very much trusting. When you're dealing with your money, sure. you want to feel good about the person you're working with. I mean, you want to feel good about working with your accountant and your lawyer as well. Same way as your advisor, because we're along, if we do our job right, we're there for a long time with you. Yeah, sometimes, Absolutely. sometimes, sometimes forever, yeah. yeah. So you just got to be careful again to, to reiterate, there, again, there's very good advisors out there. It just may be in your phase of your life, your parents' advisor may not be the right person. Well, in that example. Let me add, sure. let me yeah. add something yeah. to that to do. Yeah. What about having no advisor? Yeah, oh. you know, none at all. We can, we can beat up the wrong advisor, sure. but how about no advisor? Sure. You know, you've been going at this, and maybe you've been saving, saving, saving in your 401k. You're on the cusp of retirement now. Now you've got to really make sure you've got the clay there. Now how do we shape that clay? That's right. yeah. Clay That's being right. your money. We, now how do we shape it and make it do what you need it to do in the future? And maybe you didn't need an advisor. Maybe you were just saving, 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 tossing that money in there. Now it's really, now there'll be, at some point, the income's going to stop from your employment. Now I've got to turn this into my, now I've got to create my own paycheck. Mm -hmm. And add how to do that, get help doing add that? to that again, um, that's the perfect, it's a perfect statement because really if you're accumulating, and again, we talked about it earlier, accumulating wealth, many people, the one, one of the biggest wealth builders is 401ks or retirement plans that work, okay. 403bs if you're a hospital or a teacher. Those are some of the best wealth builders because it forces us to save, right? We all got to kind of steal from ourselves, put it in that pot and then live on the rest so later on we can live the life of our dreams. Sure. Well, it's the distribution phase where people get caught, right? Yeah. Sure. If you're putting money, say just it's a number, where I'm going to put $300 a month in my 401k, and I'm going to do that for 40 years. I'm going to give an inflation raise every year. All of a sudden you go, wow, I've got this, I got this chunk of money. It's how to get it to you efficiently yeah. where people get caught. Taxation. Proper huh? investments. Right. How much Proper are you paying investments. in taxes? You know, people don't understand, don't realize sometimes for every 100000 you have in a 401k, if you've got to pay, just for this example, 25 cents on the dollar in taxes, just for an example, that's $25,000 in taxes to pull that hundred grand out. That hundred just became 75. Wow. So that, that, the numbers in people's heads go, hey, I've, re I've saved 800,000 in retirement. I'm good to go. It's like, when you look at the after-tax effect of that, we'll run some analysis. And to, to do it the right way, you gotta go year by year. And then the curveball is, 
the taxes, I think, is imminent. They're going to go up, right, Dave? I mean, is there I any so. way? I mean, everything that we're yeah. reading about, sure. there's a lot of going on. We talked about, you know, there's trillions of dollars going. How could it not be highway taxation? It's got to be imminent. It's got to be coming. You know, I mean, I'm a little smarter than you, but I think they're going up. What do you think? What do you think, Cynthia? <laughs> I'm thinking, you, you yes, be they're going to go be up. the judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave, I want to ask you, we have a couple minutes left in the show. What about not having a written plan? How detrimental is that? Uh, well, if you have tons of money, the written plan, okay. But that's not the case for most people. Most yeah. people have what they've saved and what they've worked for. And you want to make sure the written plan is, we call it a goal plan, is you say what I want in the future, and this is what I want to happen. Do I have what I need to reach that goal? That's the basic income plan. But a written plan, it's not, it, you know, your money's your engine. That is the gas to the engine. Without it, your engine's not going to run. But right. if you got a good chunk in there, you got other things. Is it going to pass down to my spouse or the next generation appropriately, tax efficiently? Mm -hmm. um, is it um, going to go to the right people? Mm -hmm. Am I going to prevent family wars? Because I'll tell you what, when you it's get true. money involved, a lot of good can happen when the next generation receives it. But if it's not good planning, you're going to see brothers and sisters become enemies mm -hmm. well, it can happen. because it was done wrong. Yeah, money can get, when money gets involved and if parents didn't distribute in the way that they believe is what Families was right. Ruined. And that's a terrible thing. You got, I mean, having your family is everything, right? And to, to break it up over not. And that's part of planning is yeah, we have some, yeah. we have some clients sit down and, and we're part of that meeting and they, and, and th that way we're involved yeah. and they say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to yeah. distribute 25% to each of you. And you know, th this child has some special needs. We're going to be distributing. I mean, and it's all transparent, mm -hmm. and right. everybody's together. And that way, you have any questions, you ask them oh, right the now. special needs circumstances mm -hmm. really yeah. is you've got a kid with a disability or a family member with a disability. If they inherit money outright directly, that could be devastating. Right. We do a lot of that type of planning and putting a special needs trust and making sure your wills and trusts don't go directly to somebody that's receiving government benefits. There's 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 a whole set of planning. I won't bore Absolutely. you with it, but that's a. I think you're up now, Dave. You're you're just I, yeah. really chatty well, I was right just now. Say, I like we it. We only okay. have about like 40 it. seconds left of the show <laughs> again this week, and gentlemen, the time always goes so fast when we're together. So thank you for another amazing sure. show to the viewers at home. The phone number to call is on your screen. That number is 877-740-6553. What the gentlemen are offering you today is a complimentary, comprehensive financial plan to make sure that you're currently in the right position for retirement. If you want to take a look at what your goals and dreams are with these gentlemen, please call in during today's show. 877-740-6553. Be safe, be happy, be blessed. We'll see you back here again next week. Same time, same location.